Thank you very much. Now I am requesting to our keynote speaker, Dr. Kunal Kumar Das, former scientist, Indian Space Research Organization. He will focus on identifying anthropogenic activities using Earth observation satellite. Dr. Kunal Kumar Das. Welcome, sir. Welcome. So, Jai Hind and uh, good day, everybody. Uh, very happy to be amongst the August gathering today. Share some of the views on the use of remote sensing satellite, we call the Earth okay. Observation System, okay. for different purposes. And uh, here I'm going to share my uh, participant screen. Screen sharing is required. Okay. It is disabled. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, you are audible. But, you can see the screen. But screen sharing is not there. Okay, fine. Okay. Now it's okay. Okay. I'm going to share it. So here we are. So what we are going to discuss today, it is very much uh, related to the topic which has been selected uh, by Godavari and uh, the anthropogenic impact on environment, society and human health. And my topic, what we are going to discuss here that how we can use satellite remote sensing or earth observation system to get information regarding the anthropogenic activities that includes the anthropogenic pressures also. So in coming few minutes, you know, I'm going to give you some of the examples here, which is which are going to give you an insight into the kind of information the, the satellites can provide us. So here the identifying activities here on uh, anthropogenic activities here using the Earth observation system is a very versatile system here. It's not a very old system, but then uh, we have we really started using the satellite remote sensing data way back in 1972 and from there onwards till today that there is a lot of innovation and lot of many satellites are also there which are providing us all kind of information so what we get here that we get a bird's eye view of the information whatever is there on the earth surface so here what is there that Normally, the kind of information we're going to use using the satellite are uh, uh, very, very important. You know, it is it's a widespread. It is, uh, it is done for many things. And one of the important thing is here is that it can critically analyze and assess the importance of the earth resources. And also it can provide us the information about the environment. So here you see that the earth here in this particular thing that is critically balanced these days due to a various issues involved. And one of the issues is that climate change, what you call it, call it. And also there are many driving forces that that is providing us, uh, uh, is providing uh, a very good, in, uh, so nowhere near that. So this is what, of the, what we are going to see here. Now, what we can do using a satellite is that there are various kinds of satellites and beside that we have different platforms also and one of the platform you what you see we call the ground platform where normally we people used to work conventionally correct informations and then we analyze it and then we come to some conclusions but there is one more platform which is called the aerial platform and aerial platform is normally using two different platforms one is your aircraft and then second one is your second one is your uh, drone we call it the low altitude platform but what you see here that the satellite remote sensing platform what we have here in the space here up here to provide you very good information of a very large area and there, therefore why we are able to see so many things here there are different kinds of satellites utilized for identifying resources, identifying problems also, 
identifying anthropogenic pressure also. So you see that their, their work is cut out. Now these particular satellites, you know, the, whatever we have here, more than 1000 satellites these days, you know, working for different purposes, that we get enormous data. These enormous data can be utilized, analyzed. Now, all the satellites, what you see here, are in different resolution. Resolution means we call the spatial resolutions. If you have, you want to see a very small area in a magnified way, you can also see it. Now you see here that, for example, that this particular satellite, this one is GOI, is providing you information in almost a 50 centimeter level, means that 50 centimeter smaller objects can be seen here. Similarly, this one is also 46, and this Volvo 2 is another 46, and this one is another 50 centimeter. So you see that the kind of information you get here. Now these satellites, you know, are of different categories. One of the categories that is the big satellite, okay, is providing you information moving all around the earth and then scanning the earth surface and then providing you information. Second one is that what you have, you have one more category of satellite that is called a micro satellite means that which is a satellite which are having the weight less than 500 kilograms. So this 500 kilogram level satellites are also providing you a very good information. And then a very small satellite we call that, this is a nano satellite, what you see here, this one, nano satellite, cube set, is very small. And everything is so much of miniaturized, yet it is going to provide you all kind of information. So this is a video. You know how it works. You see that. Now I think the video will work here. Yeah, you can see it like this. The satellite normally moves like that all around the world, like this. It can move in any way, east-west direction also. That's up to how we have programmed it. So it is going to move all around it, and then it is going to provide you information. Like that. You are not able to see this. Yes, sir, please continue. Okay. Can you see this video? No? Video is visible or not? You tell me. No, not properly visible. Okay. Then so, I'm not okay. so, here, so, satellites moves like that. Now the product, it provides you in the form of pictures. Now we call imagery. So this is one, see a large area is covered, okay? And this is a part of say, for example, the uh, Portugal area, okay? Yeah. And then you want to analyze it, then you can also make it enlarge like this. A smaller area, you can see, you can enlarge it, and it's like that. So you see that somebody is interested to find out some changes in the urban areas, urban sprawl, for example, study is going on in somewhere, that this kind of information can be gathered from this city, like this. So further, you can blow up and see each and everything on this. You can measure it, you can do a lot of work, you can count the number of trees, persons also sometimes, depending on that. Other very important thing, you know, that we normally use satellites to find out changes in a given area. And most of the changes, what you find here is anthropogenically driven. So what we see here, that for example, this area, this Amazon forest, you know, in 1975 here, 1975. So in 1975, you know, it's a dense forest like that. But if you try to analyze it and try to compare the kind of changes taken place in that particular area in a period of time, hereafter, then you will find that this yes. is happening something like that. So people started entering into the forest, cutting it and converting Madam, for different Madam, sab log, sab log hai abhi. I Aap, think, uh, YouTube per live mein usko right. Now in 1992, they have entered deep inside the forest, reclaimed some of the area for agriculture and other farming purposes like this, and they have destructed the rainforest like that. So evergreen forest lost in this particular area. So you see that the satellite is providing you the bird's eye view of the things happening in that particular area. And finally, by 2001, you see that a lot of area is converted 
into agriculture and other uses and farm uses and then you see that the forest is retreated from these particular areas so this type of things you know we can analyze using satellite remote sensing data the out observation system now what happens during this period that you see that the year wise from 1988 to 2020 you find that there is a lot of changes you know and taken place here the deforestation has gone up and then gone down but still it is very significant so that kind of information is again coming from our observation center another thing where human is one of the biggest culprit is that forest fire anyway in the, in india 99 percent of the forest fire what we see all around our area hill areas and other places is by the people only we people we try we go to the forest, we, we ignite areas and then the entire forest is destroyed like that. So human intervention in this area is causing a lot of damage to the forest and the environment thereafter. Now see that, there is one portal. This portal is actually handled by ISO, ISRO, and particularly National Remote Sensing Center Hyderabad. They, every day they analyze where fire is there. So this fire information, what you are get, get here, the, that dots here, is the central point of the fire actually observed in that area using satellite every day. So every day information is, we are collecting, we are, we are providing to the state government forest departments, and thereafter we can also assess what is the total damage due to the anthropogenic pressure in this particular area? Now, this is the kind of things which are happening here, like this. Like this. Now, let me get into a one very important thing that this is regarding the anthropogenic impact. This is a subject you know that we have chosen for our um, uh, this international conference here. Is that the anthropogenic pressure as but now how we can we do it? Yes, we can do it very much. And then it is not only the satellite data which we are gathering uh, from the satellites, which is providing you all the information, but the other things are also there. For example, there is one more very important uh, thing what we normally use that is called the GIS, okay, geographic information system. And also with that, we also get information from satellite navigation system. So that satellite navigation system that we have also in the mobile that gives you the point information, coordinates, okay, so location, like that. Now, this is a part of the Humboldt National Park, what you see here, and you see that the forest is appearing in red, in fact. Red only because we have used infrared among the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, okay? And electromagnetic spectrum infrared is very powerful to, to differentiate different vegetation types and also different non-vegetation types also. So here, what you see here, the very red is your dense forest. Other one is not there. So you see that this is the area where you have a national park, which is surrounded by the revenue area. A lot of areas are in, under cultivation outside this, some fallow area is also there like that. Now, what happens next is that you can create a 3D view of the satellite data, okay, to measure it. So, a 2D data, okay, length and breadth is only here, is, can be converted into a 3D. It means that you have a perception, you, you, have an, you, you have an idea that how the terrain complexity is there. That is very important. That the terrain complexity, if I know in this particular area using satellite, then I can do a lot of work. And now, let me see that this is the area, again. this is also 3D, zoomed up, okay? Now you see that the same area, what you see here, this one, this one, this area, this area, is actually here, what you see here, this is the derelict land, okay? And this is the lighter tone area is actually degraded due to excessive grazing. So, and again, anthropogenic pressure. Now, if I, my study is something like that, that I want to know that how much area is under anthropogenic pressure at different level, I can do that. So, therefore, roughly it is the yellow ribbon, what you see here, the outside this area is heavily, heavily and the grass by the people here. So, that's why the forest is degraded in this area. 
So this is the kind of thing you can do here. Uh, we know this is a natural park and this is about to uh, the tiger, so therefore we have to save it. So different management strategy can be created using that here. Now, if I want to study further scientifically in this area, I want to see the cross section of an area which is actually relevant to the entire area, I can do that like that. So I cut it and I can see in two dimensional view and I can do everything, whatever is there in this particular area. The red circle, what you see is actually the area is under anthropogenic pressure and vegetation has changed in this area. So this is the cross section of this part of the national park, which is actually valid for the entire area like that. So this is a very important thing. Another thing that we see in this particular area using the satellite is that it can change the urban sprawl. Suppose this Lucknow is there in 2006, this area you see that there is not much activities going on in this area, but something is about to start, it seems like that. But if you compare it with this 2011, after five years or so, you see that a big supplement has come up in this area. So what you have, you, the planner can see, can view, can judiciously plan all the area, land resources along the area, land use, land cover, they can find out, and they can make a beautiful plan out of it, and they can plan a beautiful city like that. Other one, other thing what we see here that, that anthropogenic pressure in the forested area, and that to where elephant is involved, right? Now, elephant is a bagger species. It requires a lot of food. You want, it wants to go from one end to another, traversing a lot many areas for the food. And for that, you know, it needs corridor. So corridor is very important, you know. And suppose if you want to study what is the corridor and then what is going to happen after some time, some period of time, when elephant, whether the area is under pressure due to the human intervention, and we can find out that using this particular study. Now, see here, this is India. Okay. Now, what is I'm going to do? I'm going to draft here the forested area, like this. The green is the forest. The entire green is the forest area, like this. Now, I'm going to choose an area like this. Now, historically, if you see that, historically, this area is actually, these are the elephant areas. You know, the, once upon a time, it was the habitat of the elephants, wild elephants. But these days, it's not like that. There are two national parks here. One is your Rajaji National Park over here. Other one is the Jim Corbett National Park here. So we are going to concentrate on that and then find out what is the problem going to happen here. Now, this is your another satellite imagery in your multispectral domain, where we are able to see the forested area in red, and all the hill areas you can see there like that. So this is your Rajaji National Park, the part of Dehradun. Okay. Now the other part of the Ganges, now Ganga River, is here. We are having this is Corbett National Park. So these are quite a big area. Okay, something like eight eight hundred square kilometer plus both the areas. So and then you see a lot of villages are there, yellow dots like that, yellow dots then you can assume that how much pressure these areas must be having in that. Now, what I'll do, I'll draft these two over this thing, you know, that map, and then see that what happens here. So, this is the forested area, again, and I am going to put one remote sensing derived data over here. This imagery, this is Rajaji National Park. This is your Corbett National now the difference between these two is that there is a big gap. So elephant actually moves, make a move between these areas for food every year from one end to another and also for the genetic exchange purposes like this. So you see that there is a big gap. And then what you find that in this area, when they move from this, you know, sometime like this, then they are encountering human beings. Okay. A lot of villages are also there. Then a lot of agriculture activities are also going there. So everything is happening there. So that is all in that event. We have to cross. And then these are the hill areas where they cannot go because these are bag animals quite big. Now, if I get a satellite data further and analyze it, 
and then I can divide it into say you can say that classify it in different classes like this and give a 3D view okay draft over this area 3D model so it is something like this so you see that in 1990 actually the elephants used to move like this earlier on the yellow line and then what happens here like this by 2080 you know we found that a lot of changes have taken place in the forest area due to human intervention again so a lot of cutting is, has been done there and this is your corporate this is your other information part this area right? you see that yellow part is your agriculture area so that is a increase like, like this so you see that the degradation has taken place in this particular area due to that the food shortage took place now by 2015 okay now this are the scenario of 2015 on the classified mode and you see that that these things were like that now suppose somebody if you want to study what will happen after some time okay after 10 years 15 years 20 years 50 years if the trend persists like that due to anthropogenic pressure and other things you know abiotic factors then you can also do it using a modeling technique so modeling technique comes into play here and using that modeling technique you know that by 2020 the earth part will be slightly moved towards south like this 0.5 to 3 kilometers in the entire area so this is the kind of thing you know that what's happening the shifting in the south like that because they have to struggle and find out them. and here you see that in this area they have to move from the hilly areas and many many times these elephants they fall down and they die also so there are a lot of casualties also this is one thing the second thing is that what satellite can provide you the very important thing is that it can give you the crop estimation different type of crops growing in a particular area seasonally it can, it can also provide you information with respect to that what is happening in the agriculture crop any kind of disease based attack or not, other things are there or not so there is one example very high resolution data where each and every field is very much visible here okay now this is the plot you know we have selected for example and we want to know that what is the difference in this area happening during this period now due to the remote sensing what we have here we can find out a lot of many changes taking place. We can find out the growing status of the cotton plants in that particular area, whether it is. Better. And if you want to have so for a long time duration study, you can get all kinds of data and you can study all these things year wise also. And you can acquire in the study and you find out what are the changes taking place in that particular area. Now, this is part of Punjab. Similarly, you can blow up and see that. How the fields are looks like here. Okay, you can just plantation on the buns are also there, agriculture plants like this. And also, you can see each and every crop field where that status you can find out. So, this is one of the things that Earth Observation Satellite provides you. And this is one where you can use a multi temporal data that is and basically of different times. You can club it and you can play, and then you can see that what are the changes actually is taking place in the agriculture crop during the period of time like this. So this is American example I'm giving you here. You see that the crop status is changing from one end to the other, and the red is actually the standing crop, and the gray is your fallow land. So you see that, that this kind of thing that day wise you can see. So satellite is moving all around you. It is providing you all kind of information, and that is the beauty of this here. Now, now see that this is the last slide. Now, what we are doing, we are exploiting our resources. Excessive exploitation of it can be seen here. That where you see the RLC has already disappeared. It's a big sea in the Central Asia. Now it is not there these days, you know, all areas become dry. That kind of information is provided by the satellite. And then once you are doing all these things, you know, you can do certain kind of the 
action plan to take place in this particular. So these are the kind of things I wanted to show here in a very limited time. Hope you have enjoyed it. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Kunal Kumar Das, who were presenting on identifying anthropogenic activity using Earth observation satellite. Nicely. Once again, thank you very much for accepting my invitation and uh, present this wonderful work for important not only for us, but also for 